Today's master study will be about composition and for this composition I will be using a very well-known artist's uh, painting. His name is Isaac Levitan. He was a Russian painter and he was born in 1860. He lived a very short life, unfortunately. He died when he was only 40 years old and he was relatively unknown throughout his lifetime as a painter. However, after his death, he, he became a role model to many landscape painters till this day, including myself, many modern artists consider him and his work um, one of the best. His compositions are very strong and he was able to capture mood and atmosphere a very loose painterly way in his work. And I will start the demonstration and uh, explain what to look out for, how to approach composition and what makes his composition so strong and interesting. Whenever I start a painting or before I start a painting, what I usually do is create a few thumbnail sketches or note and designs, it means the same thing, using either a marker or I, sometimes I use paint and uh, especially if I paint outdoors and doing a plein air painting, I just create this or these thumbnail sketches right on my canvas and uh, once I'm happy with it, then I just uh, erase it. Or I also have a notebook. Sometimes I just take a marker or pencil and do it in there. So what is a thumbnail sketch? A thumbnail sketch basically is a small, almost thumbnail size. Well, I usually do like one by two roughly size little rectangle that I draw which represents the canvas. And within this small little rectangle, I create my composition, the idea of the composition. What is composition? Composition is the, the most important element of painting or drawing. And it doesn't matter what your medium is. It is basically the arrangement of dark and light shapes on the canvas in an interesting matter. What does this mean? I'd like to bring up the example of black and white photographs where the composition and values are present, but nothing else. So there are darks and lights and an, 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 an an arrangement of these dark and light shapes. And basically that's what composition is about, is the arrangement of dark and light shapes. And these shapes don't have to be um, geometrical shapes. It can be completely abstract. And the thumbnail sketch should be as simplified version of this idea as possible. So in this case, I'm working with Levitan's painting. This painting is titled Village on the Banks of the River and he painted this in 1883. And I assume that possibly he created thumbnail sketches to, to figure out what would be the most interesting, strongest composition, the arrangement for his dark and light shapes. So again, in composition, we focus on values and shapes, not colors. So color is not part of this uh, planning, this, this type of uh, arrangement. Color comes after. If your composition is interesting and strong, then the color is just uh, icing on the cake. However, if your actual composition is weak and it's not working, it does not matter what you do with the color, it will not save your painting. 
and you will not have a successful painting. I can promise that. So to put it in terms of importance again, composition stands number one on the list of important basic elements of painting. Therefore, it's good to practice it. And there are a million different type of compositions. For example, this composition that Levitan used, well, I shouldn't say this, I should say these compositions because there are different type of compositions found within this one painting. And uh, the ones that I recognized, one of them is a, and actually I cut my canvas a little bit shorter than his original painting, sorry about this, because uh, my piece that I'm going to do the demonstration on is not exactly the shape of canvas he painted on. His canvas is a little bit more square-like, not as elongated as my canvas. So I will have to cut the picture off a little bit. I decided I will cut a little bit off the sky. It did not affect the composition too much. And uh, this way I can fit most of the more important elements of this composition on, the, on this canvas. So going back to the type of compositions, there are endless uh, possibilities for composition. There are many that are commonly used, and I will just mention the ones for now that I actually noticed or recognized in his painting. And one of them is called an S curve composition. And if you look at the original, you can see it. So the river basically leads your eye, and that's that's the base basic uh, idea behind composition is how, you, how it leads your eye around the painting to your focal point and not leading it out of the canvas. So S-curve means my eye is traveling in here and going through this curve up to that little house that you see on the original and then up and back. So basically, this is what we see here as an S-curve composition. I also noticed that he used the ratio of one and two thirds in the canvas, meaning he dedicated roughly one third of the canvas to the sky and two third of the canvas to the land. And lastly, there is something that's called the golden ratio or golden spiral. And you can find this type of composition all the way back centuries in some paintings. In some cases, I think people just uh, try to force this idea onto a painting just to explain it. it it's, it's present, but it's not always obvious. Here, I could say that um, it's, it's reminding pretty much to the golden spi spiral as well, starting out large and uh, and getting smaller and smaller. You can actually look up the mathematical idea behind the golden ratio and how it can be found in nature, in flowers, in shells, in different formations, how perfect nature can be. It's uh, very amazing, the whole, whole idea behind it, so it worked to check it out. This would be basically the spiral that I see where he starts out large, general, and goes into smaller and smaller details 
on the opposite side of the canvas where he is painting smaller and, and more of these buildings of the village. So just again within one, one painting I could recognize and maybe there is even more but I recognize right away these three different type of compositions. And uh, this is the thumbnail sketch, again, that I was talking about. You could create, if you are painting something, not a, a master copy or master study, but rather painting a painting that's, that's your own from scratch. It's good to create several of these little black and white ideas, little black and white compositional uh, thumbnails and figure out which, which one looks the best, which one is the strongest, which one will make your painting the most interesting before you actually start painting. And after this, I will start the master copy and uh, try to recreate Levitin's painting, not in complete detail, and it's not gonna be 100% identical, to the original, I'm only trying to capture the essence of it and the main idea. It's not going to be an exact copy. My canvas is a piece of linen canvas, toned. Um, you might see some different uh, colors in the canvas. That's just something I do. I did a little uh, color practice here and then I delete or erased it and now I'm just reusing this canvas for the purpose of this master copy or master study. My colors are listed below this video. If you're interested, I'm using sienna mixture diluted with solvent to do the sketch. The canvas, uh, for the canvas I use uh, the grid, simplified grid method. I like to call it that way because it's not exactly a fully drawn out grid. It's just um, helping me to make this sketch copy a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurate. And I think I'm off right here. So what I just did quickly divided into four and then into quarters. And same thing on the original. As I mentioned it before, he actually divided up the canvas where the majority of the canvas is filled with the land and a smaller part with the sky, which means the land actually starts, this is my halfway mark above that, right about between the three quarter and a half a mark. And on the other side, it's a little bit closer to the three quarter mark. When we talk about composition, also have to talk about focal point and what is the main focus of the painting. In this instance, it's placed roughly on the one quarter mark from the right side. And that's a little building where he painted his darkest, uh, darkest dark and uh, hardest edges. Usually those are two ways to draw attention to a certain area in a painting. And uh, right after, so contrasting values, darkest dark, uh, a lot lighter values, and then hard edges. And it's placed purposely off center, but due to the movement in the painting and the arrangement of these dark and light shapes, your eye naturally flows in this direction and lands here before 
it travels further to up to this tree and back to the original starting point. And this makes this painting also very successful or this composition, how he managed to lead the eye around his canvas. Lesson here is to choose a focal point and create or design your composition the way where you lead your eye to the focal point in the painting or not your eye but the viewer's eye and try to keep the viewer's eye within the boundaries of, of the canvas and not to, not to let it wander out and uh, how Levitan accomplished this is naturally the flow of this river would take your eye out of the canvas however very cleverly he has a little reflection of the bank right here in the river and what it does it kind of redirects stops and redirects your eye and movement instead of keep moving to the right it helps to move up this is one of the li the lightest areas on the painting and that's how he accomplished to change direction in this composition and move the eye up instead of out from the canvas. The way this uh, painting is divided up is uh, also called the rule of thirds and this is pretty much what I've been talking about uh, originally where the artist divides the canvas up into thirds vertically and horizontally and in this case it would be roughly here and here so you can see how the focal point falls onto the crosshairs of the the vertical and horizontal uh, line well probably this way I need to bring it a little bit closer and also how the actual um, land falls below the, the top third the one third which is here and uh, this section here would be the two third Generally, it's, um, so this is what's called the golden rule. If the artist placed the focal point right in that center, that would make a very weak composition. So that is generally not advised. Of course, there are always exceptions and depending on your subject as well. But generally, it's true that it's good to avoid and you can uh, make sure that you don't place your focal point right that center by making an X corner to corner. You will know that would be that center. If you need to put it closer than the one third mark to the center, then still try to make sure that it's not lining up with the middle, with the center. So it could be to the right, left up or down, but just try not to put it dead center. Uh, placement of a focal point in the dead center makes a very rigid, tense painting and uh, relatively uninteresting and it would arrest the eye in the center, not allowing it to move in any which direction. Although the focus of this demonstration is or was the composition and learn about Levitin's composition. I will also go over quickly the four main color mixtures of, in this painting because usually everybody is very interested in that. It has nothing to do, the colors have nothing to do with the composition. I'd like to emphasize that. As I mentioned it before, a nice or successful or good color mixture doesn't make the composition work better. 
it's the other way around. The color doesn't support the composition, the composition supports the color. Therefore, it's secondary in importance. Uh, actually, in, in the list of um, importance, composition stands in the first place, then comes value, and the third one is color, and within the color temperature. So just I wanted to mention this quickly because most people think color is the most important element of any painting, which couldn't be furthest from the truth. At least when we are talking about traditional painting, traditional realism. Uh, in case of abstract paintings, it's a different story, but I am not talking about abstract and I'm not, to, not demonstrating ab abstracts. So it's not relevant. The first color mixture is the sky and water. And the, really the, what we see in the water is the reflection of the sky where I will be using titanium white, the yellow blue, and that's going to be one mixture. Probably I will add a little bit more to make it darker. The yellow blue have a little bit of a greener tendency than ultramarine or cobalt. And the other blue is cerulean. Manganese would be a, something also very similar to this that has even more greenness to it. And I will just have these two ready here. The sky also contains a small amount of warmth in the form of pinkish violet in this painting. And for that I will use a little bit of white with a little bit of cadmium red light, even less. And probably I added too much already because I want it to be so subtle that it would be barely detectable just as it is on uh, his painting or in his painting. Therefore, I will add a little bit more white to this mixture. Or as the land goes, there is a gorgeous, beautiful, rich green that he used. I will try to recreate this by using cadmium yellow light. And I will need most of this probably. Cadmium yellow light and ultramarine blue will be the two dominant colors in this mixture. And I need a lot more blue in this case than yellow. Very rich, very chromatic green. I mostly see this green in the foreground and as the landscape progresses, it changes slightly, it grays a little bit. So there are several ways to gray a green. One of them is adding the complementary, which is in this case a red, or not in this case, generally the complementary color of green is red. And for that, I will mix the dirt color that he used, starting with uh, a little bit of white and I will add some cad red light and some ultramarine blue. And I need to make this lighter and a lo little bit less red. Therefore, I will add more blue and more white. And 
and this will be my base mixture that I will use to adjust everything else. Most of the clay or dirt that shows in his painting is lighter, a lot lighter than this mixture. So I will just use this as a modifier. First one will be a pinkish. Adding more white. And the other one will have a little bit more, or not a little bit more, because this doesn't contain any, will have some yellow in it. And now it's getting closer to the actual color that we see in the foreground of his painting in the dirt. There is also in a more distant part of the painting on the riverbank, we see this uh, very light, one of the lightest value areas that um, sand or, or clay that looks a lot yellower and for that I will take a little bit of this and more yellow with the white and it needs to be a little bit more tamed a little bit less yellowish although this little island on the right contains some amount some larger amount of yellowish color and I will keep it at this stage and if I need to adjust it as I paint I will adjust it as far as the green goes that's the last thing that I like to um, uh, mix or work on a little bit is the distant greens which will contain a little bit less chroma, going to be a little bit less chromatic. I will add a small amount of, not even white, actually I will add a small amount of the complementary, which I mixed here. Lastly, there are several darkest darks that, that I already, some of it I already painted on the canvas here. That can be a combination of different colors, I usually use ultramarine blue and crimson, Lucerne crimson, at least as a starting point. And in this case, I will add some of the Taylor blue as well, and uh, a little bit more of this crimson. And that creates a very rich, deep, dark.
If you enjoyed this demonstration, be sure to click subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram. I will be publishing similar videos on a regular basis and uh, hopefully I will see you next time.